All right, we're here at Outlaw Diesel Miami. We're getting ready to put some dually fenders on a 2006 F-250. We just converted it into a dually. We'll go into the specifics in a minute. All right, so we got, this is the new 2020 coronavirus special at the mad, mad world of Felix Alderman, Miami Outlaw Diesel. The problem is that he can't even pronounce my name correctly. It's Aleman. Oh, right. wait a minute. I thought it was Bullwinkle. No, come on. <laughs> All right, Rocky. <laughs> and we're doing an F-250 to F-350 swap with Rocky, my personal assistant here. And uh, you can probably do this at home. The All hardest right. part of this build and to do and get a truck from single wheel and put it to dually is the fender cutting. So if the owner of this vehicle sees us cutting into his truck, he's not like it. So in short, what did you do? Well, what we did was we changed the rear end, of course, you gotta put it a one ton axle on there and a uh, dually axle, of course, from a Ford. Uh, you have to put the adapters up front so you can put the dual wheels, type wheels in the front, and put the duals in the back and probably get yourself a dually. But the fenders in the state of Florida, you cannot be riding around with a tire sticking out like that. But as you notice, I really don't care and I still have it anyway. Uh, we're going to go right ahead now. We're going to start cutting into the into this fender so if this ever takes a load or it gets a really hard hand or it starts to articulate it doesn't hit this because there's a wheel right here now it doesn't go into a fender wheel. ah very good so all right let's get going hold my beer and watch this all right so what are you doing there oh you damn blind i'm marking what he needs to cut My drying skills. Damn, he's a bad dude. You can do it by freehand. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> mad, mad Dr. Diesel. You must be wondering why uh, Rocky does not have no uh, 
safety gear on in his eyes. But you must be noticing that I got my safety glasses on. They're clear lenses and I wear safety contacts. Well, I think you just convinced him. I think he went to go get a pair. Sometimes, always, sometimes you do make sense. Yes, sometimes you gotta be dumb to be tough. That's mm -hmm. what uh, Gene is doing here. Mr. Rocky, AKA. Uh, uh oh, I guess that he did not put on his safety glasses and we'll be rushing him to the hospital before this boat is done. Yeah, where are they at? Very uh, inexpensive at Harbor Freight, item number 43946 here, that, you know, you're not gonna lose an eyeball for a dollar. Like Rocky over here. So Rocky here, you should, you want me to put them on for you? Yeah, I would. Just put them on for you there. <laughs> just in case you don't know how to do, do the installation. Installation on it. Uh, I think we should leave the wrapper on it. <laughs> And guys, uh, pick off the wrapper. Harbor Freight sells some quality tools. You buy it and you just throw it away. Here you go, sir. Thank you. You can go back to cutting. And if you look, Ford spends a good, some good money on their bed. You know, installation that that thing has in there. You probably can't hear me because this guy's damn grinding. But yeah, they do put a lot of insulation in there. Pretty cool how they do that. Probably that, that, that spray on stuff. Beautiful uh, cut yeah. there, sir. You did a great Thank job. You. Well, obviously to be I'm lying to out. him. <laughs> I found a Rocky here, Northwest 8th Street, at the intersection. <laughs> he had a sign out that says, uh, need money. I told him I can give you a job. And he's been working here ever since. <laughs> Works out pretty good. On this shore bed, the fuel nozzle is on the fender. So what you gotta do is you're gonna have to run to your local hose shop. Don't put any don't put a garden hose on here. Don't go to Home Depot to put on a hose. You need to go to a place where they specialize with you probably put a marine fuel line hose, a fillered hose, so you can extend it from here through there into the, the nozzle. So meanwhile, though, you can use it just like that. You just got to stick here. Well, not really. No, not because the, the, the hand, the holes won't la won't reach all the way in. Unless I get the saws on, I just cut a big hole and I can stick my hand in there. Okay, so it definitely has to be Yeah, you need out. to do it. All right, so look, we're, we're here mounting this thing. We've got our six by six in here. This this truck has airbags in. That's why you see it so lifted up in the back. And if you look in here, we're going to start off right there. I'm going to drill a hole right there. It's like a little hole, and then that'll give me my mark. You want to put this flush with this, okay? You want to put it flush right there. We'll make it hole, make it hole, and then I can go in here 
and we'll show you in a little while how I get in there and, and I'm gonna have to mark this. And the, you can't see it, it's too dark in there. But I'll get a mark for you after I, I'm right. And you know how the old saying goes, measure 400 times and cut once. But make sure, because this is, either the fender's gonna come out sideways, or you gotta do this. The last time I did this was about eight years ago. It's been a long time since I've done this. When it, this guy wanted to make his truck a dually because he didn't want to spend $100,000 on a Platinum M350, because that's what they cost. He wanted to go this route. We got it all done for him. He's gonna be putting on a trailer. Probably we're gonna do some footage. You're gonna see some footage of him going up into the Rocky Mountains because he does hang gliding. This owner, this guy, this owner, this this truck is crazy. I thought I was crazy. This guy's just plain on nuts. Well, get back to you now with the other holes. Got it? No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wow. We just want to go in. Okay. Hold it right there. Alright there, Bow Winkle. Hold it. Hold it. You don't have to really put fancy dancy screws down here or nothing like that. set up. I'll put Loctite and lock washers and everything. Let's just hold it up for a minute. Once you get that in there and like that, it'll be touching the edge just like you want. Okay. So put your hand behind it so when I'm drilling through I can catch your hand. Okay. You want to use the, the sharpest drill that you can, which I'm not. So it works pretty good. Oh boy. I just want to pull in. So, let's put our little set screw here to hold all this in, in place. Oh, this is really, really flush. Huh? This is nice and flush over here. They did it exactly with the contours. Yep. Yeah, but I, I guess when you when you tighten her up over here, this all yeah. stuck in. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing now? If you can look up in here. Look. You're on that? If you look up in here, you can see these slash, uh, cut marks in here. Each one of your screws is going to go up in there, centered in these holes. So follow it along. There's going to be another one over here. So you're marking the holes with what? Just a sharpie marker. So when I pull this all off, I can drill all my holes and stick it back up on. Okay. So kitties out there, you get it? He's just basically marking off the holes. So when we take off the fender, we see where the holes are and we drill the hole. What's it called? What size drill bit you got? Three eighths. Gives it a little. There you 
had to make a little access hole to get to the last bolt on it. Now we have access to get to this one bolt here in the middle. All the rest you have easy access, no cutting inside. All right, so we got the middle bolt, both the bottom bolts. That's good enough. Send it. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> We're here with the Mad Doctor Diesel, Miami Outlaw. Uh, this is going to be the second part of the. Fender, well, dually Fender install, F250, F350, coronavirus month three. Well, we couldn't go to our supplier, so we had this laying around. It's a fuel fill from uh, 250. So we're gonna do a little bit of slicing and dicing, make a little extension because since the fuel door is all the way at the, the dually Fender, we have to make a little bit of extension to make all this work. I'm going to double clamp everything. I'm going to double clamp everything and let it ride. She should be good. What type of holes are you going to use? Oh, well, it's going to be the stock. Well, it's a stock hose from factory. If, if you want to go to the uh, to your supplier for hoses, this is the type of hose you use. But since they're closed, you know, we really can't, can't even use this stuff. We're gonna have the right sizes in my little arsenal of hoses there. So, so how many inches approximately are you gonna extend it? It's like about six inches. Okay. All right, let's get to it. Three bolts that hold this fuel. Um, filler to the actual compartment up top, and then it should just oh, pop out. I may have to take the hose off the back, pop this out like this. Mm -hmm. And then this will have to be cut like here, and then we can stick our new uh, piece following up through that and into the new fuel door. Beautiful. So this was a, a little ball buster. We had to take off the gas filler base from the original fender. And we was wondering how the hell does it come off because it was really stuck on there and we, there was no bolts until uh, Gene figured out that there was spot welds on it. And if you can see the spot welds are right here, one, two, three, and four. So those are the four spot welds that he had to drill out. You can see the spot welds better there. They sanded them and painted them so they don't look any different, but there's four little bevels, one there, one there. Got one all the way up here and one all the way down here. I made a hat to made another hole and another hole. Another hole and another hole. That's because of the, the angle. The angle of the holes. 
wasn't yeah. going to be. It wasn't going to be correct. And then the guy would have been very pissed off because fuel was going to hit him in the in the lap. And we've had that happen before, right, guys? What are we doing? We're taking off this pipe. This is the old filler neck that went to the top of the tank and runs up to where the old fuel door was. You don't have your mask on. Coronavirus. I'm giving everybody corona, exactly. Only, and then Only drink Heineken. We're just getting off this old rubber tube on here so we can size up for how much more we need to add to it. Excellent. So we're going to fasten down this neck. All right there, Bullwinkle, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're almost done here. We got our little filler uh, pipe on here. And this was the old one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here. Run a hose extension here and a hose extension right here. And we're going to call it a day with this side. And all we got to do is a little bit of electrical and put some uh, marker lights on. So uh, I'm going to get Rocky the Squirrel over there to cut here and cut here. And we'll call it a day. We'll show you what how it came out. Those are your two pieces cut. Now we're getting the little pipe that he cut. And yeah. putting it back onto the little holes. And same thing here, we'll get the little holes to connect these two together. All we need is like two and a half inches of the small holes extra to cut to uh, put onto the small, the smaller holes on the gas filler tank. For the big holes, it looks like you got about five inches, five or six inches of holes you're going to need to do this job. The last touch is the running lights, which are going to be hooked up to your running lights. There you have it, man.